Hello and welcome to the Harris Federation Scheme of Work on Times of Change. This is a creative writing unit where you will produce your own creative writing when you've finished all of the lessons. This can be an imagined piece or it can be a personal experience of your own. So have your pen and paper ready and be creative. Remember, this is a video format, so you can pause at any time whenever you need to do your work or if you need to go back and recap any ideas. Enjoy your lesson. Today's extract is taken from the autobiography of Michelle Obama, the wife of Barack Obama, the first black president of the United States, who was a Democrat. In the book, Michelle talks about her life as the First Lady, living in the White House. Obama served eight years as the president, the maximum amount of time a candidate is allowed to do so. In his presidency, Obama introduced free health care for Americans, a bit like the NHS, as well as fought for the rights of many minorities and supported great change in the United States. He was succeeded by Donald Trump, a Republican who opposed many of Obama's beliefs. Since being elected, Trump has reversed the free health care bill, as well as campaigned for controversial causes surrounding race and gender, most notably the Make America Great Again campaign. In today's extract, Michelle describes the last night of Obama's presidency and finding out that Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States. Let's read the extract together now. If possible, try and have a hard copy of this in front of you so that you can make notes. As the movie wrapped up and the lights came on, Barack's cell phone buzzed. I saw him glance at it and then look again, his brow furrowing just slightly. Huh, he said. Results in Florida are looking kind of strange. There was no alarm in his voice, just a tiny seed of awareness, a hot ember glowing suddenly in the grass. The phone buzzed again. My heart started to tick faster. I knew the updates were coming from David Seamus, Barack's political advisor, who was monitoring returns from the West Wing and who understood the precise county-by-county -county algebra of the electoral map. If something cataclysmic was going to happen, Seamus would spot it early on. I watched my husband's face closely, not sure I was ready to hear what he was going to say. Whatever it was, it didn't look good. I felt something leaden take hold in my stomach just then, my anxiety hardening into dread. As Barack and Valerie started to discuss the early results, I announced that I was going upstairs. I walked to the elevator, hoping to do only one thing, which was to block it all out and go to sleep. I understood what was probably happening, but I wasn't ready to face it. As I slept, the news was confirmed. American voters had elected Donald Trump to succeed Barack as the next president of the United States. When writing a story or autobiographical account, you may wish to build tension for the reader leading up to a key event in your plot. Look at the following sentences. Highlight the techniques used that you think helps build the tension in the extract. The use of the verb furrowing indicates that one of the characters is concerned or anxious. It signposts to the reader that something is wrong or one of the characters feels like something is going to go wrong. The short sentence of the phone buzzed again uses onomatopoeia of buzzed and tick. The short sentences quickens the pace and makes the reader feel anxious. The focus on the senses makes the reader feel like they are in the room. Knowledge of the electoral process would explain to the reader what they are so anxious about. The first person narrative means that we feel what the narrator is feeling. It makes it more personal and creates empathy in the reader. And the use of punctuation, in this case a colon, forces the reader to pause just before the big reveal of what is making the characters so worried and anxious. Think of a moment when you were feeling tense or anxious. This can be real or imagined. Mind map some of the things you were thinking and feeling. You might find it helpful to split it up by senses. 
In addition, can you include what techniques you could use in your own writing to help you build tension for the reader? Let's take a look at this example. As you can see, the mind map has been split into the five senses, see, taste, touch, smell and hear. It also includes feelings or emotions that this person was feeling when getting their exam results. Use this to help you make your own. Use the Michelle Obama extract and your own plan to write an autobiographical account of a moment in time, focusing on building tension for the reader. Use this checklist to help you. Use of five senses, use of language techniques, punctuation for effect, first person narrative, or creating empathy for your reader. Now have a look at this model answer to help you. Look at the highlighted bits in particular and note the focus on the senses which sets the scene for the reader and encourages them to feel what the narrator is feeling and the descriptive vocabulary that shows how nervous the narrator is. When you have finished writing your own account of a tense moment, read back through it and label where you have included the five senses, vocabulary to show tension, empathy for the narrator, punctuation for effect and sentences for effect. <laughs>